Hi, my name's Eleanor Shaw. I'm Professor of Entrepreneurship um, within the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship, where I am the Head of Department. A lot of my research is within the area of social entrepreneurship, social innovation, social enterprise, and I'm going to talk with you today a little bit about working in the third sector. So the, the very first thing that's important for us to do is to consider what do we mean when we talk about the third sector? There's actually lots of different labels that are, are used. Um, sometimes the third sector is referred to as the not-for-profit sector. And most recently, the third sector has been relabeled, if you like, as civil society. And I've given you a link there on the, the, web, the from the web on the slide that you can have a look at, go and visit if you want to find out a little bit more uh, about that definition. Um, it's important, I think, when we talk about these different labels, not to, to get confused and think that because the third sector is not for profit, that that means that organisations within the third sector are not interested in profit. That's absolutely not true. The, the sector is not for loss. They certainly, organisations in that sector, do not want to make a loss. However, as we'll discuss in a moment or two, they have a different attitude and approach to profit and how profit can be used. So, so what is the third sector then? The, the third sector can sometimes be difficult to explain and to define because it is made up of all different types of organisations. Often these types of organisations are known as non-governmental organisations. You may be more familiar with the term NGO. Now, the reason for that is that often third sector organisations operate in the same space as government departments. For example, they might provide aid or health support. But even though they operate in the same space as government departments and provide many of the services that government departments typically have provided, they, they are not government departments. They are independent of government, hence the name non-governmental organisation or NGO. As mentioned, NGOs and others within the third sector have a particular attitude towards financial surplus, what we, all, what we more commonly call profit. They, they certainly don't want to make a loss. They do want to make a profit. But rather than allowing that profit to benefit people working for the organisation in a financial sense, what you tend to find happening within the third sector is that pr any profit or any surplus made is reinvested back into third sector organisations to support the objectives of those organisations, whether those objectives be social, environmental or cultural. So when we talk about the third sector, we're talking about voluntary and community organisations, charities, social enterprises, cooperatives, and mutual organisations. And again, I've given you some links at the bottom of this slide that you might want to have a look at to find out a little bit more detail about what we mean when we discuss the third sector. Something else that is common to all third sector organisations is that these organisations, the reason that they are established is because they're addressing something that economists refer to as double market failures. So that means that third sector organisations are often established when one or two of the following conditions arise. The first is that when both the state and the private sector fail to produce or deliver goods and values that are really needed. So if we think here about childcare, it might be that, and we hear about this just now happening very much in England around schooling, it's predicted that within a couple of years time, there will not be enough places within state run schools to accommodate the number of children that we have. Now, one option might be if you have enough um, finance within your household to send your children to private school, but that might not also be an option because you may not have enough money. So that might be an example of a double failure. 
a failure to provide social goods and services by the state and also by the private sector. The second way um, or the second way of thinking about a double market failure is that when this happens when goods and services are available but in some way their availability is unjust or unfair. Um, good examples around this might be the, a postcode lottery um, or again the provision of childcare but perhaps uh, you live too far away that it makes it difficult to access the childcare through state provision and your local nursery might be a private sector nursery, but it's too expensive. So when it, we often find within local communities, when there's a, a double market failure, local third sector organisations might be created to fill the gap left by that double market failure. As you're probably beginning to realise, one thing that's very, very typical of the third sector is its diversity. It really is made up of all types of organisations. So let me just say a little bit more about that. What types of organisations might we find within the third sector? Well, the first of these are charitable organisations. Now, these might range from large organisations. One that you will know, ones you'll know very well, might include Oxfam and Save the Children. So these are large-scale international organisations. Uh, charities which operate both at home within Scotland and within the UK and also have a strong international focus. But we also know that many charities can be small locally based charities. So for example down in the Merchant City we know that there are a number of different charities and perhaps one of the smallest um, charitable organisations down there is one known as Glasgow Women's Aid. So charities are an important part of the third sector and they span the whole size of organisations from very, very small to large international bodies. A second group of organisations you often find within the third sector um, might be known as voluntary, voluntary sector organisations. Almost the name is, is on the tin here. Voluntary sector. These are organisations and initiatives set up, established and run by volunteers. So ones that you might be most common and familiar with would include parent-teacher associations. Many of you will have gone to Cubs, Brownies, Guides, Scouts, been involved in local football teams. These are all voluntary sector organisations. Um, some of you might have gone along to volunteer to clean up local parks or areas of community interest. Again, volunteering. What we tend to find, not always, but we tend to find with volunteer, voluntary organisations, these are often very locally based and they rely upon the local goodwill and a desire to give something back through volunteering. Uh, a third type of organisation that we find within the third sector is defined as a community-based organisation. Now, you'll see on the slides here that I've got an arrow pointing from community-based organisations to this lovely building here. Um, this lovely building um, was a building that was recently constructed by the Mull and Iona Community Trust. And you've got the website there at the bottom. You can go and visit um, that website to find out a little bit more about the work of the, the trust. Um, I actually was up there visiting them last week and that's what made me think about putting this picture up on here. Uh, the mission of the Mull and Iona Community Trust is to improve the quality of life on Mull and Iona. And how does it do that? It does that by raising funds and grants from external bodies and also promoting charitable giving on Mull and Iona to enhance the lives of those living on those islands. So community organisations are, are probably, they've got a long-standing history, but we might, I think we're starting to see a little bit more uh, formalisation around community-based organisations and or these types of organisations aligning themselves both to economic, social and cultural prosperity within locally based communities. 
A fourth type of organisation we often find within this sector is known as a faith-based organisation. And I'm going to give you an example here. The example I have for you is called Muslim Aid. Now, Muslim Aid is a UK-based international relief and development organisation. It's been operating for more than 20 years and it tries to work to save and improve the lives of millions of um, people in more than 70 of the world's poorest countries. Now, that doesn't seem particularly to have a, a religious bent in any way, but the mission of Muslim Aid is to be a premier British Muslim relief and development agency guided by the teachings of Islam and by using those, uh, that, those readings to endeavour to tackle poverty and the causes of poverty in innovative and sustainable ways. So the, the faith part of being a faith-based third sector organisation is that that organisation will draw upon its readings of Islam to help it direct the aid and the interventions that it wants to make. The final type of third sector organisation that I'm mentioning here is social enterprise and I've highlighted this in red because of all of these types of organisations we're experiencing tremendous growth in social enterprise and social entrepreneurship so that's why I've highlighted that in red and to give you an example of what we mean by a social enterprise I've got a really nice example for you here uh, from a local social enterprise called Impact Arts. Impact Arts was established by a Strathclyde graduate, Susan Actimel, um, and it started its life in Deniston. And what Impact Arts tries to do is to combine use of the arts to help people change their lives with entrepreneurship and enterprise. So it's trying to bring together the arts to try to encourage individuals to learn about entrepreneurship, to learn about being more enterprising, more individual and, and independent, the ability to take care of themselves. And again, you can visit, if you Google Impact Arts, it's a fascinating organisation, you can find out a lot more about the very brilliant work that they do within that space of the third sector.